we've been following the big story from the White House this morning. President Biden has selected the new U.S. Supreme Court justice nominee who would be the first black woman to sit on the high court. This is a historic event. Joining our conversation this morning, our Nine News legal analyst, Whitney Trailer. Whitney, good morning. Hey, Gary, good morning. Happy Friday, Colorado. There you go. All right. Well, let's uh, let's talk first about Katenji Brown Jackson. She has an impressive background. Walk us through a little bit of her history. She does indeed have an impressive background and the justices who are nominated for the Supreme Court are almost uh, impeccably qualified. She is no exception. Uh, she obviously she went to Harvard undergrad and Harvard Law School. Uh, she's held a number of different positions in law firms and on the bench. Most recently, she was appointed to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, which is actually known as the second highest court in the in the land because of how many Supreme Court justices come from that uh, bench. And so she was appointed to the D.C. Circuit in 2021. Why that's important is because she got full Senate confirmation at that time. Uh, Senate confirmation, including several Republicans, including Lindsey Graham and Murkowski and some others. So she clerked for Justice Breyer. She's well respected. If she's uh, confirmed, she'll be the third black justice on the court, the sixth woman, and the court's been in existence for over 230 years. Yep, pretty impressive for sure. So uh, as we mentioned, she's going to be replacing Justice Breyer when he retires. So how does this process work out? Well, so <laughs> the last several nominations have been kind of all over the place. They were rushed. And then, of course, we know with Merrick Garland, it wasn't even put forward. So, you know, these these processes have become very partisan and contentious. So hopefully it won't be uh, that way. But she'll meet with the senators who want to meet with her. Uh, she'll then go to the Senate Judiciary Committee where they will, will where that committee will vote. And then it'll go to a full vote of the Senate. Now, on average, these uh, confirmations take about 70 days from official nomination to the vote. Uh, the fastest was John Paul Stevens, which was in 1975. That was only 19 days. So this one, I, I suspect, should go fairly quickly. And I just think it's important that she was just nominated by the Senate last year. So it, should, it shouldn't be problematic. Do you think it'll be contentious? You know, it's it's so hard to say. I mean, the, the last several have been contentious and really they started becoming that way in the 70s and 80s. And it's it's bizarre because people like Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Antonin Scalia, who were very uh, you know partisan coming in, they were all confirmed almost unanimously. So the process has changed. But here it's going to be a tough situation for the Senate to say, hey, we confirmed this person just last year and now we're not going to. So uh, knowing the, the current state of affairs, it probably will be, there will be some uh, discord or dogma, but I think overall there should be a confirmation. We just have a few seconds left, but is this going to be it for the court for a while or do you think there will be other changes? Real quickly, it's a good question. I don't know. I look at the age of some of these, uh, the justices, and now Justice Thomas is, is the oldest at, I believe, 73. So I don't think there's going to be, nobody looks to have any you know, health issues or what have you. So I don't suspect that there will be any anytime soon. Amy Comey Barrett is still the youngest at 50. Uh, Judge um, Jackson Brown will be 51 if she's nominated. So it's going to be a young court. All right. Whitney Trailer, as always, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Sure thing. Good to be here. Okay. Take care.